Another game waiting in the wings of this one as well. If you're enjoying yourself, don't fear, it will not end after this one. In fact, the party's only getting going. Copenhagen Flames and FaZe Clan, the warm-up act for our grand, or rather semi-final, I should say, between Gen G and Cloud9. Starting off, though, with the pistol on Dust2, Nico going straight up long and taking and demanding a whole lot of space. He gets the fight straight through the doors, refresh. Often impactful, this time we'll have nothing to say. It's up to Nodios now as they go for the long cross. He'll try and sneak in towards the smoke, but there's so many bodies here. But the bomb goes down. down in a horrible position. They've got this. Oh, no. It's Oof. still the man advantage of a phase. They can still win the round, but still, this is very problematic now. A couple of kills oh found. Oh, my God. This is huge. Nico and Cold Zero remain. They need to get down there and grab the bomb. And now towards Goose. This is where the very important kill comes forward. If Cold Zero gets this, they right back in the round, but it doesn't look great so far. I still can't find the shot. Oh, finally, there he is. gets it. For anyone wondering, by the way, what happened there with Nodius, you are so much harder to hit if you turn around in those pistol rounds. It's much harder to hit an opponent from behind and your head much less of a sitting target. 2v2, Nico is advancing through doors. They still haven't retrieved that bomb. They're waiting for Nico to uh, go for a big Is he going B here? backstab? That's yeah. so lit. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't talk like that. I don't say those <laughs> words unironically, honestly. <laughs> Called Zera, though. He knows what he wants, but he knows it's being held. Nico's dankest of flanks is being expected by Hooksy. I can't believe it. Oh, and Nico was ready. Okay, now all on to Queenix. It gets a lot more difficult now. He's got to deal with two on vast extremities of the map, and FaZe Clan have stabilized. Well played. They slow that right down. Nico with four kills in it. What a shot on the B-bomb side as well there. Great communication, thinking on their feet, that's for sure. And after losing those very important kills, the bomb going down in a nightmare of a spot, they managed to make it work. So that's great stuff. FaZe Clan posting the pistol. I don't think we have a force buy here from oh. Copenhagen Flames until now. Here come the scouts. So got to try and steal the round away if possible. Five sevens of Deagles. A few smokes in the mix as well. And we'll see whether they can get back on their feet. This round is a very hard round to win. Dust two, sure, you can smoke long doors. Sure, you can smoke cat, but... The T's can take a lot more territory and be a lot more aggressive as we see here. Pushing straight out the long doors. They catch him with the flashbang. The assist will come through for rain. And now it's Farlik's chance to deliver. Oh, so wide. He wasn't expecting it so soon. Faye's looking set for the second here. Good Molotov onto the site. Forces refresh his hand into the fight. He's trying to use that smoke as a one way and it did get him far. He got him an advantage, but unfortunately couldn't convert it. And so now Faye's locking this sad site down, looking very strong. Yeah, that's for sure. It's going to be a force by defeat. Not a single kill found. Cold Zero at three and the full eco coming forward here. $2,500 per player. Shouldn't be much to talk about in round number three. Maybe they get a flashbang. Could go for the B retake. We don't cross anyone over towards the double doors. Wait for them to rush, then you send five players in late. Let's play a fun game. Who dies first, Nico or Cold Zero? Both, un both oh. haven't died yet. Uh... I would say Nico. He's, he's normally the one who's running down towards double doors, trying to find kills. Will be rain this time. I, if I had to hazard oh, a guess. Check this out. Oh, man. Yeah, that's exactly oh. what I was talking about. A late speed cross, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Three. And that's the end of that. You think you can even see him? Yeah, neat and tidy. Nico lives for another round. Three and zero. Feel free to play along at home. Who's going down first? Six zero, though, for Nico into the first three rounds of play. Impact from Rain. Copenhagen, though, pulling out their first full weapon round. This is where we find out how competitive Dust2 will be. Yeah, I have real worries for Copenhagen Flames' CT side here. And just with the tenacity that FaZe Clan have come out with on this second map already, Feels like uh, that was a wake-up call for them, Inferno. Look, they've gone at a look at themselves in the mirror, maybe splash their face, and let's see how they continue forward. Rain out long, flashes over the top. Molotov from the CT is definitely missed. Here we go then. Bit of long control for FaZe. Long corner has been smoked off. And Farlik, we know he has to step up and go absolutely massive for Copenhagen Flames. A 3-0 recovery is on the agenda. Brokey still in T-spawn. Bomb there as well. Rains be boosted up towards the blue bin, and he'll can hold that position for a while as so he's got some set nades to throw as well. And a bit of B control from the CTs here. So we have got Queenix pushing in towards Apo of Huki, and we'll see whether this is going to be enough. Olaf Meister just misses him crossing over towards T-Spawn, and he gets a lot more than he bargained for there. Farleg bravely <laughs> challenges from short down at 4 HP, but he gets away with it. Yeah, he can work with low HP, that's for sure. Copenhagen Flames with their first kill. Of round four. Space being taken. 
Nate's not going to get to anyone. Oh, Rain, okay. what? It's just opened up the site and three quick kills. Phase set for the fourth. What just happened there? Yeah, I'm not sure. And I'm sure Copenhagen are still a little confused, perplexed as to where their teammates just gone. Rain's found a quick double out of nowhere. He really has. Saves the day once again. It was the opening kill for Copenhagen. Flames managing to get a nice coordinated strike towards Zappa, but still not enough. 4-0 for phase gun. Really looking quite promising here on Dust 2. 4-0. So we're actually going to be able to bring it up on Skybox once this round concludes. And we can see just how Rain was able to take so much territory off of them here. Was uh, very surprising to see that go down in that fashion, but good stuff nonetheless. Hunting as well, seeing if they can take away these last remaining rifles. Ah, uh, they might be able to get one of them. Going to push for this smoke right now. They commit. Doesn't work in that sense. But there's going to be good news for Copenhagen Flames, at least. At least have two rifles. And here's the Skybox segment brought to you by Chad Birch. So check it out. We actually have a smoke on the corner there. There is a CT1. That's what the blue means. Rain just walks into it here. And as they're in transition, boosting up, trying to take control of that cap position, Ooh. he just comes out and gets two freebies. So it was because all of that pressure across the map, it forced them into awkward spots. Yeah, and they couldn't keep track of long. Good work from FaZe Clan. It's looking sterling so far. Four-man mm. Aileen, quite easy to uh, diagnose. So the old boost and CD spawn, designed to sabotage their efforts if they go for the mid to be split. Could be happening, they've got the bombing up a B. But as I've said so many times before, it's a pre-fire area. You don't see it too much these days because it's not that viable. Pushing out towards long. They'll get some intel here, but it'll be too late. FaZe will commit in the next 15 seconds. And once they do, I dare say the round's over. There's only Queenix waiting, but he's got the M4. If he gets three kills, maybe there's a chance. Good dink. Flash high. Try again. Molotovs. Oh, they don't move. They stand and fight in tunnels. Now they spread after relieving that pressure of the rifle on site. Nico catching the only other real threat. It was hot hooksy. Bomb has been planted. Nico displaying some patience here. A perfectly cool round. Five versus three. CT's just trying to scramble together any sort of weapons. And Nico not even moving a muscle here. He's got protection for CD spawn. His teammate, Rain, will be covering that area. So they can just hold here. They don't need to hunt for anything. They don't need to take the deagles out of their hands. Smoke confirms the CTs won't be able to push forward and do much at the end, but they are going to sneak through. And there we have it. A nice clean finish from FaZe. Didn't give a single frag. The money, it's looking like they've got this one in the bag already, I have to be honest. Yeah, so remember that series we had Spirit versus Namiga? I guess. And map one, Spirit yep. looked fantastic on Inferno. Yep. Uh, sorry, not Spirit. Amiga, Amiga yeah. looked great on Inferno. They they were able to pull it out of the hat. And then we went forward into to map number two. It was still relatively competitive. And then we got to map number three. And, well, that one was a quick affair. This could be the same story on the cards here for Copenhagen Flames, unfortunately. If I had to guess, looking at the stats and the way they played Inferno, you could definitely see that there was probably one map that they've played an awful lot more. Developing and refining to the point where it is tier one level. If anything, it's competitive versus the very best. But... The downside of that is, is that as you develop and grow as a team, there will be maps that haven't had the same level of attention given. And Dust2 could very well be one of them. You combine that with FaZe, who have definitely been refining their Dust2 over the last uh, ESL tournaments. It was the Pro League. We saw a lot of Dust2 from them and then le bleaching or bleeding into uh, what is now ESL Road to Rio. A little B rush potentially here, boys. Just mix it up just when they're getting comfortable. They get their orbs out. They're changing setup here. You're just going to be rushing B. I actually like this. I don't mind this at all. Fair play to them. And they've actually broken through the initial smoke here. Queenix is in a lot of trouble, and he knows that he survived longer than I thought. Might be able to get a frag here. He fires off a lot of bullets. Gets at least one. Can he find the second? Oh. Apparently not. It's Rain will be finding the double kill here. Three versus three. Massive favor towards FaZe Clan here. Can they get the smoke down towards double doors? Of course they can. And that might be the safe call already. I think it is. Should what a be. call. What a great call. Yeah, you nailed it. Just as they were getting yep. like, okay, guys, here it is. This is it. What we practiced, let's set up. It's just, it's over. You can't, nothing you practiced is going to do anything unless it was around B. 
And then he had the one in there. Same player, Queenix, who didn't have the incendiary, I don't believe. He didn't deploy it at least. Mm. He throws a flashbang from the very back, and only one kill instantly traded out. They can't even justify going for the round. 6-0, as easy as that. It's a little, little bit of a rule for, for players at home. Maybe you're playing a bit of a mixed team, or you play some matchmaking with some friends and bits and pieces like that, or maybe you're playing on the pugs of ESCA. But just the thing, if you are going to rush, one of the keys that allowed FaZe to have success there was... I'm not sure exactly which one it was. Normally in Putting our games, the money. we say the third spawn. Third in the pack. Yeah, yeah, so you are ready to extinguish a Molotov so the rush can continue, right? Normally the first spawn needs to either be flashing or guns out. And as long as you extinguish those Molotovs, you're able to continue having your pack push on through. Worst case, you get mowed down, everyone dies. Best case, you enter onto the bomb site like that, you trade out efficiently, you lock them out, and they have to save their guns for uh, another crack. Nico was the first death, by the way, but he did get nine kills on the path to it, so... Cold Zera's untarnished spree continues. Five kills to him. Yeah, to go down six rounds into Dust 2. They definitely have looked a little worse for wear here. Copenhagen Flames, Dust 2, this T side. It's really just dictated the pace. This is a different change up, charging into long, and it's not quite going to work out. Hooksy, Nodios, both taking a frag. Best chance they've had so far in the six rounds of play. They're currently sitting up four versus three, but long control granted towards Nico. Farlog with the orb. Yet yeah, a frag on Dust 2. Zero, zero, 005. Not even a, an assist. Not even a leg shot converted. I don't even remember him shooting the orb. Yeah, yet, so. right. It's, uh, it's a rough one considering the performance and the shift he put in on Inferno. I was expecting fireworks here, but. They are being absolutely wrecked right now. Yeah, Refresh has also kept quiet. He was one of the heroes over there on map number one. One kill to his name. Hooksy is the only one who was doing damage, who is continuing to do a little bit. Four for him, but still really nothing to get excited about just yet for Copenhagen Flames. Crossover smoke deployed by Brokey. The teammates ready to pounce, and if they cleanly get towards Zed, it's only Nodius and CT spawn. Great nade. <laughs> Players will short now. Farlig does rotate back in, but remember, no kills found yet. Molotov, pretty much nullifies when Nico gets him. Wow, what the hell? Just through the corner. Knew that it's a common tight line held. They'll try and boost for this. I like it, but it's being watched by Rain. And Nico was ready for it as well. So now they know where the other one is. Nodios position revealed. Queenix as well as he starts unloading utility. And that utility does get a frag, a good tag. They could boost for the finisher. And yes, they will. Rain goes down. It's on to Brokey. The plant is for him. Let's see how they solve this issue. They smoke. Oh, it's not. It's not even planted for him. He's going to have a real dish issue here. They can just hold it. They boost for it. Way too late on the Molotov, folks. And Copenhagen Flames will take their first. They had to work super hard for that one. It's Nodius with four kills in total. There was a chance. If Brokey did throw that Molotov early, I dare say he'd have won the round there. There wouldn't have been enough time to scramble and take him down. But either way, Copenhagen Flames will take a pause after that first round found. They know a change of pace is coming because FaZe, they've got a ton of money here right now. They could even go one of those rounds with a few Mac-10s and go for another B-Rush. They go for a full buy regardless. Orp for Brokey. And uh, we'll have a look at Copenhagen Flames. Only two players surviving there. Got to be some compromises, but luckily Nodios of 7k can certainly drop a weapon. Queen Eggs of Farlex still yet to invest in any utility. So he's dropped two guns, Nodios, right? Yeah. So he had to give up that AWP and an M4 and buy his own. So very charitable donations from him here today. But having a look right now at the radar in your top left of the screen, it looks like all of the phase individuals are facing towards A. Now you can see the little... Yes. triangles, they're all looking towards A. So this would tell me potentially something towards A. Wow, there's the hard-hitting analysis we pay him for. Chad Burchill, ladies and gentlemen, four charging towards long. He's got it bang on, and it could be a difficult task for Rain. The flashes have got him out, but look at Nodius go. Running with the pace from the previous round, he gets caught by the flashbangs. They continue to barrage over. Refresh was playing on the edge of that smoke, but it seems like they want to continue to contest. Molotovs for Bluebin. Two, oh, but wasted. he's put down a preemptive smoke. Nico, oh they all God. start battling towards the pit here, but the CTs, they're starting to answer back. This next kill, very important. It's going to be the second for Refresh. Starting to show us what he's made of now in Dust 2. Four on two. Hold off Meister and Brokey. AWP. Currently handling... The P250s. He makes his way back oh, towards upper. And this shot, is a nice position. Farlig always taken down. This P250 that strikes. Uh, no one else is there. They've got an open B bomb site. The bomb 
Should be planted, no problem, but two players coming from tunnels. My God, I can't believe FaZer making this one look competitive. It was a 2v4. If he hits this shot, okay, oh my God. that's banging from Hoogsy. Brokey to clutch. Takes the first fight and wins it, getting away with 74 points of health. If he can get this next one, he's being hunted by Refresh. They're going to hit at the same time. Oh he hits God. the shot. He knows he's being pushed, but it's from the left-hand side. A valiant attempt from Brokey. But Refresh, he started that round with a double, but it's the single kill onto Brokey that translates into a round win. It's a little bit too close for comfort there. The one versus three comes down to the wire, but Refresh, he picks it up comfortably, but still, they're cutting the bomb down. Their lost bonus is done to rack up now. They've already got a 6-1 lead, right? So they've got more than enough money to buy, and Copenhagen Flames survive with one player again. They'll recover the AWP, but... With $3,500 per player coming in, it's still going to be a difficult situation for them. Refresh can drop one weapon. As you can see, he spends $4,500. He had to do so. For Mass for Nodius, and he's been getting the multi-frags in the last couple of rounds, so that's a downgrade for sure. Nico, we talked about this. Likes to go fast down towards middle. Jumps up towards the Xbox and waiting for the Orpa to challenge Shaw. Farlick still yet to frag. Still yet to get a single lick of damage. Zero ADR. Eight rounds into the game. If it is just going to be an A set piece, he can't miss here. This is where your AWPA needs to step up and deliver at least one frag. Oh, he heard that, no? Oh, he will now. Cold Zero <gasps> caught out, but still gets the shot. Nodius, he's going to be furious. That was a dink exchange, but Cold Zero's weapon hits just a little bit harder. Now, FaZe have the advantage. Olaf knows there's two on the B site. There was spam and a nade coming through the smoke at the exact same time. That's cool. That's a good observation. That means that now already they're working with the info that there's only two A. It's going to be refreshed though. One of the star players for Copenhagen Flames. Execution. And a bit of B push from Queenix here. This could actually be pretty massive. He's confirmed it's an A attack. Refreshed, desperately trying to get up, unfortunately. It will be found out. Nico now has a clean walkway up and towards the A side. The AWP does rotate the position, though, oh. but not for long. Olaf Meister, so that's from long. And it's a very, very well coordinated round here for FaZe. Maybe a double kill there. Not meant to be. Queenix with a flank from hell. Almost manages to get a couple, but not meant to be. Do you see what uh, FaZe Clan just did there? Now, Cold Zero, he, when they are doing a slower default, will be playing outside those long doors occasionally. They did that strat, Henry, that we were highlighting from Spirit yesterday, where you walk the two players in, right? This opening is fantastic, but you walk the two players in and you send out your anchor. He either gets a kill or he dies. If he dies, then you send out your second man, delayed, real wide spacing. Because normally, if you're watching these demos, you're like, okay, the anchor's dead, that should be long clear. I can now go help my teammates. Hey, Olaf comes out, takes out Farlig. He only gets one kill for the round. Yeah, it's good I see stuff. what you mean. That is very cool. They had no idea Olaf Meister was coming through. You feel like you've dealt with it. It's like a, yeah. a, you've, you've kind of looked into a drawer, said there's nothing there, and closed it again. You won't go back looking for your iPod in that drawer. It's no one's a, looking for iPods anymore. I had an iPod up until two years ago, and everyone mocked me. So Now, nah, respect to the, uh, the the limited clique of iPod in car users. I know there's some that have like a car iPod. That's pretty much where the music device is kind of... Uh, Gone. When I went to Rome, I went to Rome uh, on my own just for a couple of days. This is when I was living out of suitcases in 2017. Mm. I had my iPod plugged in and I was listening. You know, I was banging my head to the tunes on the taxi on the way to the airport. I jump out, grabbing all my bags. Thank no. you very much. Paying the bill. Left the iPod in the taxi. I'm Never more of a again. more of a Zoom guy myself. Yeah. 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 What a victory for that taxi driver. I bet he's himself. loving it now. A cheeky five dollar profit there. <laughs> Massive. Couldn't believe his luck. Smokes. Only one? Where's the second? Coming in now. They'll be heading towards middle for this. And the Ooh, B split. Sad, They've right? got everyone there. I mean, only USPs. It's better chance than any, though. You never know. Well, um. apparently FaZe do. They are very <laughs> comfortable with this one. And uh, they actually, they looked like they actually wanted to find the stack. Like, where do you think they'll be? Let's just coordinate everyone <laughs> to end this round quickly. We won't drop a single frag. And uh, unfortunately, for Copenhagen Flames, things starting to get out of hand here. They can't really justify double orbs that with the money they currently have. I'm sure they'd like to get into it if possible. But right now, it is a T-sided affair. They've called their third timeout. And we're only 10 rounds deep. I, I want to keep it clear, though. If I'm phase, I want to make sure I get as many rounds yeah. as humanly possible here. I said that Copenhagen Flames, their T-half against G2 mm -hmm. was pretty decent. So if you're phase, you don't want to have to weather that storm because we can see what one or two swing rounds can really make possible. I can't believe Nico has 17 kills. 
Last map, he was kept a little bit quiet. You know, it, it was still able to find frags across the board, but 17 already. Yeah. 153 ADR, having a bit of a banger here. Rain continuing good form. 10 kills to his name. 8 for Cold Zera, 4 for Brokey, and then 3 for Olaf. On the other side of things, we've got Nodios leading the way with 7. 5 for Hooksy. Refresh with 4. 2 for Queenix. And Farlig, unfortunately, still with only one kill to his name. So the Orpa needs to turn it on now if they want to have any shot on this CT half. Well, well, well. Round number 11, and a four-man stack towards long this time, trying to push back phase if possible, but they don't commit to long on the start. It's Brokey with the orb towards B. He's been flashed off. Rain taken out at the long corner, but still they can't hold onto these leads. It's actually advantage now towards phase. Heavy damage inflicted towards Refresh. Miko looks dead set on getting another kill. Wow. He was so ready for the CT to try and take the chance on the edge yeah. of that smoke. And as they retreat, Refresh wants to take some Keep of that coming. space. Yeah, Cold Zera's waiting. And he can't believe his luck. Now look at that knife out with such conviction. He knows that that was the only one there. Takes all that space very quickly. Queenix may not be anticipating this. He was ready for Nico though. And he's doing well. He smokes off short. Well, smoke helps him. If he gets that frag. Okay, now things get awkward because he's got a gray screen into one. The flank is everything. That's My the God, ball. they've got a chance here. They've just got to find Olaf Meister. He's dancing in the smoke. A fresh weapon, 15 bullets. Olaf still living not for much longer. Bomb now is theirs. The CTs have got a shot here. Yeah, but it might be short-lived. Brokey coming with the orb towards short. Is Hooksy ready for it? He might better grab the bomb and just get out of here. Good flash. He gets the kill. Oh. There's a chance. There it is. Can recover the C4. Drops the smoke and he's out of there. The smoke is enough to suggest I might be coming up and you can see that exact mindset from Queenix. Towards the tunnels, though, he goes. I don't like going no. to be on this. Okay, that's that feels safer. Significantly safer. No crazy Queenix shot on that slither gap he's opted for. And Brokey, this 1v2 now becomes so winnable. With an AWP on B site, my goodness. What can you do, Queenix? You're going to have to... Well, actually, if he closes the gap while the plant's going on, it's less of an issue. He's got a lot of ground to cover, though. And yeah, Brokey with the bomb down now. He's likely going to go for something yeah. a little uh, aggressive. He well, wants the fight. Queenix knows he hasn't crossed over, at least. So he can be... Short, oh, oh, he gets a second life. He wasn't ready for that at all. Brokey, a rare miss from him. Back down to just these snipers. One versus one. Bomb taking at some pace, oh. and it will be the shot as Queenix delivers. He somehow avoids certain death there. It looked like Brokey completely outplayed in the swing from window as idyllic, but it's the shot that lands in the end. It's going to be the third, and a much needier third for Copenhagen Flames. Any chance on that replay just to see that first Brokey shot in slow-mo? I want to see just how far off, whether he was moving when he took that shot or, or where the inaccuracy came from. It could have just been a flat miss, or it could have been a case of getting a little too excited and just creating that inaccuracy, trying to tuck back in after the shot. Again, though, every round they've won so far has had one player surviving. All three. Ouch. So uh, they're still recovering, hemorrhaging cash and phase anything but, because they only lose one round at a time and bounce back. So, Nico, fast towards short this time. 19 and four, folks. He really hasn't had too much that can stop him. When his deaths coincide with Copenhagen's round wins, you can see how much impact he's having, jumping over the smoke for the info. Wants to take the, he wants to fight the AWP. He's willing and so ready to fight Furlig. And it's scary as hell. Already losing a lot of his health. The Molotov will force him further back. Nico single-handedly just taken A. I mean, that's that's the commentary. It stops there. Yeah, a, they a has been taken. They can't even do anything about it. They have to save again. The money doesn't even justify thinking about going for this particular round. Got two for masses, no kids, and an AWP with no armor. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's over. So, their only objective here is to save the little they have. Farley down to 24. Nordios will be trying to hold the long doors at this point, but Hooksy might even give up his position here. Olaf Meister swings around. Doesn't get the kill, but at least Hooksy will find an AK-47 now. I still feel that Copenhagen Flames can be threatening if they're able to get four five, or five rounds. Five would be good. Yeah, look, this isn't a great CT half, but we outlined that before even coming into this matchup. So it's not like they're going to roll over and give up here. FaZe, they've been undefeated thus far in uh, the road to Rio, whereas Copenhagen Flames, they really want a top four spot. And FaZe really want to take those rifles away. So we'll be left with a AK-47 and AWP. <laughs> it was still kept hold by uh, Cold Zera. He's throwing that over to Brokey. 
but Rain getting caught just in the final seconds, or milliseconds, really. Nine to three, you say five is attainable. It certainly isn't out of the realms of possibility. This round, however, could be the 10th for phase. Only to save rifles coming into this one. A glass cannon and an armored hooksy. Here we go. We are off a few more rounds to go, but I do agree with Chad. Like four or five is still recoverable. It's not ideal, that's for sure. Phase look very scary right now, but it's their map pick. Copenhagen Flames is trying to hold on. They've got the AWP and the AK save in the previous round, but that's about it. Looking at the bigger picture, this one might have to fall by the wayside, but uh, round 15 is where they can really step up. We'll see the AK and AWP towards the A side of the map here. Farleg, 2 and 10, boys. He impressed us so much in Inferno. Yeah, he's yeah. just having a real rough time. Faze making it so difficult, especially when you've got Nico in this kind of form. Every time you think you're okay, to hold those lines. You know, we talked about how the removal of the super powerful Krieg enabled Orpers to take fights versus Riflers again. I feel like Farleg doesn't feel that at all. They could even win this round. Look at this. They have all five members right now stacked over towards the A bomb site. The utility for FaZe right now is whittling down. They're down to two Molotovs. Oh, sorry. That's uh, a lot more than two. Four Molotovs. That's better. But they can use those Molotovs. And if they throw them all out at once, well, then Copenhagen Flames can pounce and potentially get away with this. Here comes the final commitment from FaZe. It's Hooksy who needs to find multiple kills. He's done that. The only player that's stepped up so far. No frags found. Farleg will get his... Burning. Oh, he's, he's accepting his fate. <laughs> so, well, I suppose you got me. And uh, just refresh remaining. Another convincing round for FaZe. Not really much to get hyped about there. They get one kill. That's about it. Round 14 coming up. Money more stable. We haven't seen a double orb set up yet, but they still can't really justify it. Money's just not there. Much better. Phase plan, bouncing back from Inferno, showing us how powerful they can be on this particular map. But bear in mind, Alex, we have seen huge leads online from Phase before. <laughs> yeah. The most notable one, that 11-1 on Inferno. They are not out of the woods just yet. They need to make sure they focus in every single round as we have got the final timeout for Copenhagen Flames here in the first half. That just goes to show you how badly this one's gone for them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what strats you can talk about for 30 seconds that's going to stop Nico from playing as well as he is. Uh, there's not much you can do to shut the man down. It's going to be focusing on yourselves and your own crosshairs for these next two rounds. Win the duel. That's pretty much all you got to do. Take him out of the round. He's had more kills in one round than some of these Copenhagen players have posted for this half. It's just a discrepancy that does not bode well for victory. Another B rush, Alex. You fancy Ooh, that? Oh, baby. Let's see what they got. A smoke. They won't... Go straight in. They'll let that utility get pulled out, limited at best as well from the CTs. So I think that the idea of that with Brokey at the very front, if he gets the opening kill with four players behind him, he probably absolutely goes for it. They were smoked out, he's called it off. And that's fine. If you ever call a B rush at the start of a round, you can cancel them. If you, you find yourself in a position where yeah. a player gets segregated or goes down super early or takes a lot of damage, it doesn't feel like he'll do much, it's fine to cancel it and just go back into a default, which they'll probably do right now. It's the same with everything in life, you know, yes. relationships. Yeah, indeed. Um, maybe not like mortgages and stuff, but... No, that kind of is a, a, a contracted deal. Yeah, if you're going to sign on the dotted <laughs> yeah. line, you can't get out of that one. Um, yeah, most other things you could probably choose to get out of if you wanted. So, one more round oh, here they come. would be something for Copenhagen Flames with Olofmeister. Spots a couple of them pushing towards upper B. They'll fall back. Farleg with his orb on this B side of the map here. So he might want to reposition. It's a split coming through. He could be in the perfect spot to shut this down. He's a window right now. Needs at least two kills there, boys. Three and 11 right now. Farleg, what have you got for us? Not much. Uh, uh, nothing. A backflip off of the bricks. Queenix doesn't last much longer. And now FaZe. Sight is theirs. They cannot believe their luck. It's going to be another save. FaZe Clan, two frags. And the CTs are forced to swallow their pride. So the intention was B from the start. Delayed by a smoke and some bullets, but ends up same result. At least it's quick, right? If we're going to paint it that way, it's quite quick and painless for Copenhagen Flames. I wouldn't say they'd have a shot on the third map if this was close and drawn out, if they felt like they had fire and they were pouring everything into it. But because this is going past so quickly and they're not even really having a chance to contest in a lot of these rounds, you're actually reserving a lot of energy. Sorry, conserving a lot of energy in that regard. And then when you do get to the third and final, which it looks like we're definitely going there now, they can give it their all again. It's not, not ideal. Of course, you want to try and win in two, but just the way that the, the uh, chips have fallen in this case. 
Well, looks like we're coming. Oh, oh dear. Okay. Another gun removed there. That's going to be refreshed, taken down at the very end. Nico, the impact player, around 14, which leads us, of course, to round number 15. The first half comes to its logical conclusion momentarily. 4M4 so far. Farlig, probably not even worth thinking about the orb. He goes for a scout instead. I'm not sure why. He won't go both to the B game. The orbs is not working out for him. It seems like it's costing them some rounds. The retake's not possible in a lot of circumstances. And the long flash Molof Meister. Just going to commit by himself and suggest his multiple players here. Oh, that's a lovely shot. And now he'll continue as he'll call Zero to get the second. They're going to get ready towards B here. Oh, not just Sporks walked straight past Olof Meister. Oh, my God. My goodness. <laughs> so he's trying to nutmeg. He ends up getting nutmegged, reversed through the smoke. Nodios can't believe it. Now into the B side. It is undefended. Farlig with only a scout. It's so, so difficult to defend. A 2v2, though, if he could just get one shot, slow them down, anything. Molotov smokes. He's just going to try and get in the flames, get in the sight. He knew all he needed was one. Instead, now it's Nodios to try and find them both. He reveals his location. It was a bit of a ambitious attempt through the smoke does give them all of that info okay talking of ambitious so is that jumping for the final shot hope lost perhaps because phase sit at 12 on the half two my goodness if copenhagen flames fallen off a cliff and it's phase clan the jagged rocks they meet my god nico 150 adr or thereabouts and that's just the first half of this map it could be a quick second though i've got henry g and chad by my side for the adventure and train is our third if we need it by your side for the rest of time alex don't you worry about that hell yeah and we're gonna have the xbox smoke down early nodios will deploy that it's looking likely to be a b attack to the bomb heads towards tunnels you can throw the xbox smoke every single round this remove vision towards short, keep them guessing. And Queenix now will be challenged a flashbang and Rain to follow it up. Can't find the quick kill, but he is very good at the USP. I'm sure he'll be able to find Queenix eventually. Oh, middle, they're charging in. It's the plan. He did find him eventually. You were bang on. But the main body of the assault refresh reversing into the site. And there's Farlig <laughs> filling the feed. Do two kills out of the six he now posts. I'm sorry, but whoever jumped through the window backwards is my absolute hero. Refresh, bro. Give the guy an MVP. Well, well, well. A much-needed pistol might be converted here. We said Reigns good with the USP, but I don't think he can do much about this. It's the clock of Farlik. He didn't do much in that first half. Only the one kill here for now. Nobody else has even got the flank. And he does indeed. You're dead on. It's going to be a very impressive one. That jump through the window there, is that to avoid flashes or... So I that think that going he's, over? he's checking below him. You yes, can see that. Right. He's circle jump yeah. backwards, so he's hard to hit, right? He's hard, hard to hit from the platform as well. Yeah, so so the thing is when... Look, if you guys have ever played at home, you've played on some uh, deathmatch and it's pistol only, you'll notice that the players who aren't facing you, you don't really know how to predict their, mo their movement as well. And the headshots can be much harder to come by. So by doing that, you're kind of protecting yourself, making it more difficult for the It's the CTs. equivalent of a of boxer's guard in a pistol sure. round. It's not a bad way of looking at it. Ouch. Owie, owie, ouch. Rain hits one, and actually, looks like the T's are struggling to find the final shots. Nico manages to get two. With that angle, it shouldn't even be one. I can't believe he's managed to keep it competitive, and now they even have an edge. Bomb doesn't really look too retrievable for Nodios. It's up on Cat. He's going to have to get through Brokey first. So, Brokey and Cold Zera have done so much hard work already. I've got the AK-47 and a scout. Nodios coming up from long. They seem to be quite aware of that. But here he goes. He knows exactly where the scout is now, but needs to isolate him somehow. No grenades available, but one minute on the clock. This crossfire should maintain. They don't need to watch any other facets of the map. He'll edge it up. There's the shot. Could oh. find the second. Great effort. Wasn't quite enough, though. 13 to 4. It's going to be a force by victory for FaZe. And I assume the same response for Copenhagen Flames. They're going to have to force right back. Farley with three, the most impact he's had so far. Still not enough, boys. Yeah, he's woken up in his T side. He got three in the pistol, three in the first. But still held at the door. It was a Nico scout, ladies and gentlemen. A Nico scout in that second round force, having to kill three on that short position with Brokey. Now here's the force. As predicted, a great flash. That could get Nico a little under pressure. Ooh. They're putting so many bullets into him. 
He desperately wants to get back on the site. He knows he's gonna. It's just a moment of time before he goes down. Tries to get his rifle as far away as possible. That was wild. He's being constantly harassed right there through the smoke. Nico's actually able to throw his gun away, so that means his teammates will get a free upgrade as it is. They're still looking like the better of the two sides right here. A lot more utility. There's one defuse kit in play. Okay, if if we get to a post plant scenario here, keep your eyes on Rain. He's the important figurehead of this one. Tech nines and the scout. Holding the cross from CT always feels like you've kind of lost already. But, uh, certainly do see Olaf Meister up on the site. Much less of a punish now, as he can just challenge everyone as they hug that wall. Great first frag. He can tuck in now. They still have to cross. Getting as much information as he can, as safely as he can. Furlig still at the back there, but from behind, Hooksy can strike, and this there's more good. where that came from. They don't adjust immediately, but still Rain finds him. Well, they will manage to get themselves up towards the A side with that flank, but the Molotov will be deployed towards the side. Bomb still going down, oh. and a great shot. He gets it just before he leaps it towards <laughs> a grave as well. Two on two, and a boost. Coldzera demands it. Loki gets him up, and a shot from Queenix will remove his head. Two versus one. They're forced by. He's actually going to work out here. Brokey has to get a kill towards the pit beforehand. He's got a kit, but now running out of time. Needs a kill in the next five seconds. Not going to happen. There it is. Back to back forced by victories. Do we see another one for FaZe here? Uh, I think with the round lead, they should concede because there's no point in getting stuck in this back and forth forced by scenario here when you could just take a save or two. Get yourself up to all the guns that you need and finish this one off cleanly. It doesn't matter if you concede another two rounds to Copenhagen Flames. It's all good. Yeah. Just make sure you win. That's what the uh, the core concept here is. Get in the game, win it. So let's see what happens. Smoke across mid. That means they're going to be able to get a bit of a stack. Alec will spot one. The rest will avoid his gaze, but the bomb is actually going to upper B right now. We'll D to it down to lower dark. So thank God crisis averted for the Copenhagen Flames. But if they go mid to B, they will still have to deal with four players on the phase plan side of things. It's not going to be easy. Certainly not. Players really have started to master the the jump spots for info. Like there's so many different areas where they, yeah, they, right. they strafe across a particular line just to get that info safely. There's more and more cropping up now. We saw Simple with that ridiculous one earlier today where he jumped and caught the, the flank all the way onto the A site while we see more and more players picking it up. Definitely another nuance to the world of Counter-Strike. So, Nico, Rain, Brokey. Oh, they're about to swing. Here comes the fight. Three of them around the corner, and it is two for Nico, and the bomb delivered. It's a battle of the four spies, but it may not translate to a victory. Well handled oh. by Queenix. Back and forth we go. Still with a fighting chance here. Cold Zera waits patiently in towards the bomb size. Teammate Olaf Meis will take oh, that they They've got no idea. There's Cold Zera, and it is going to be back to back. This wasn't even a four spy. Oh, my Ooh, God. It goes down to the one versus one still. All right. Olaf Meister with the scout. He won't get the kill with a tag here. 100 HP for Nodius, and he'll go across, oh, and he will. Yikes, through the does. door, it's a headshot. Can you bloody believe it? This round, this game, um, yeah, FaZe will take 14 in the end. Thank you, Olaf Meister. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was his only chance, really. He'd have had to have done the rest with a pistol, a tag, and a pistol finish was his other only other option. This was the shot he hit on Furlig. Fur Farlig, excuse me. And that is the one that brought home 14. Big connection and the T side scrambling to make a force by work. They've got a single rifle for this one, lads. Five towards B, I think they're sending it. They'll be held off by the incendiary, but here comes the smoke, the flash, they're going in. Broken to mow them oh, down, he'll get it. the first two. He's looking for an AK-47, anything on the ground. There's only pistols though. As we'll see, Cold Zera. A lot of damage inflicted. Should be able to get at least one kill here. That would secure the round, in my opinion. Can he find the second? Maybe not. Well held. Great flashbang from Rain. It's going to be map point for FaZe. Train pretty much a lock-in at this point. 15-5. Copenhagen Flames will have nothing here. They have $1,900 loss bonus. They have to buy out what they can. Deagle's armor. You know the rest. Well, your point stands, Chad, about the... Uh... Copenhagen Flames not having to lose a lot of energy in the Battle of Dust 2 because this one's already over, it seems. Yeah, that's me looking for silver linings. Yeah, it works. Honest. I'll take it. Four man lean towards long side. We haven't seen any t kind of uh, attempts at a long aggression. Lots of teams go for it. Haven't seen Copenhagen, to be fair, have much chance to because this one 
There's already been another opening casualty. Nico, he's desperate to find a 30 bomb, and there's only been 20 rounds of play so far. The only smoke they've really had has to be expended just to survive. Flashbang towards middle, commitment coming through. And what can they really do? They can smoke off spawn one more time. Has to be a one DK, not gonna happen. Low HP Farlig. Scouts and Deagles remain. It looks like we're done here and we're going to train, boys. Choo -choo. Refresh and Queenix, the only ones that can really change our minds. Looks too good for Rain. He's heard the mantle, he knows. Where the majority are coming from, Nico does too. He's been given that information and There's now... No oh, goodbye, Copenhagen Flames. It's Ash 